Good evening and welcome to eBible Fellowship's Bible Study in the Book of Revelation. Tonight is study number 4 of Revelation chapter 6. We're going to be reading verse 8. And I looked and behold a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was death, and hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword, and with hunger, and with death, and with the beasts of the earth. Now, as we were discussing this in our last study, we saw that the pale horse is actually the color green. It identifies with green grass. And green grass identifies with the believers as they identify with the Word of God. And and, and so uh, we're very interested in this rider who is riding the green horse because the Bible says his name that sat on him was death. And the, this scripture sounds um, uh, horrific. It, uh, death riding a horse with hell following. What, what possibly could God have in view here? And so we're uh, curious and we're very uh, interested in finding out what is the Lord talking about. We understood uh, what he was saying with the rider on the white horse as the Lord Jesus going forth with his gospel conquering and the rider on the red horse. We understood that that was Satan doing battle with Christ and the rider on the black horse. Well, that had to do with the time of the great tribulation when there's a spiritual famine within the congregations and yet God commands hurt not his elect, hurt not the oil and the wine. But the green horse, the pale horse, what what could be in view with this rider who is seated on him? And to sit in the Bible means to rule. He's seated on him and his name is death and hell follows with him. We see that death and hell are connected in this verse. And that's significant. Death and hell are not mentioned all that many times together, but they are uh, in a few places. And one place we want to turn to for right now is Revelation chapter 1 in verse 18. And here uh, the Lord Jesus is speaking and and he says, I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. Jesus Christ has the keys of hell and death. And uh, we saw the Lord uh, use these keys, for instance, in Revelation chapter 20 where it says in verse 1, And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him. And here, this is language describing the judgment of, of God upon Satan at the cross when the Lord uh, bound the strong man, uh, the Bible tells us, and he cast him into a bottomless pit. Now, of course, there is no actual bottomless pit. It is language, figurative language God is using to describe the condition Satan came under of hell and and um, and and identify completely with death, and also it kept him in restraints during the period of his binding, the thousand years, which is another figure to represent the entire New Testament church age, which turned out to be 1955 years. But we see the angel or messenger come down from heaven having the key. And that is referring to Christ, who is the messenger of the covenant 
the Bible tells us, we also find in Revelation chapter 9 another angel in view in verse 1. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. Now once again, this angel and the star are representing the Lord Jesus Christ. He possesses the key of hell and death. And and that's what this key is going to unlock. In verse 2, And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit, And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. These verses are describing Judgment Day, May 21, 2011, when God brought judgment on the world. What did he do? He opened up the bottomless pit. He opened up hell and the, the smoke that um, indicates the wrath of God as the smoke of a great furnace came out of the pit. And where did the smoke go to? The smoke came upon the earth and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. So the condition of the bottomless pit was one of smoke as a result of a great furnace. It, and uh, you can visualize that, um, that traditional picture of hell, of a burning place. That's exactly the image God is using here. And yet the, the significant thing for us is that the condition of the bottomless pit is brought up to the earth. That is, the smoke is rising. The smoke comes out of the pit and it begins to um, darken the sun and darken the air by reason of the smoke. And this makes the condition of earth the same as the condition of the bottomless pit. To put it another way, and to say it in some other words, God brought the condition of hell to the world when he began Judgment Day on May 21, 2011. We, we don't read of Satan ascending out of the pit. It has nothing to do with that. That happened back at the beginning of the Great Tribulation. For a little season he was loosed. But the opening of the pit in Revelation 9 identifies with the transition of judgment from the churches, as, as their judgment was described in the previous chapter of Revelation chapter 8, and now the final three woes deal with the nations of the world, with the inhabitants of the earth, with the worldwide judgment of all unsaved individuals. And God is bringing them into the condition of hell. Hell is brought to the earth. And, and, and so it is likened in our verse, in Revelation 6, as though death was riding a horse and hell followed with him. Now we read in Revelation chapter 18, which is describing the fall of Babylon. And uh, remember, Babylon fell after the 70-year period. And that 70-year period typified the Great Tribulation. Therefore, we can understand Babylon's fall, historically, which came after the 70 years, to represent the judgment of the world, which occurred after the 23-year Great Tribulation, as that Great Tribulation ended on May 21, 2011. And God um, has exclaimed... In Revelation chapter 18, in verse 8, Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, 
and she shall be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. Notice how death comes in one day. Death is is now um, taken over. Death is reigning supreme over the earth. And, of course, the picture again in our verse is death is riding a horse because a horse is an animal that represents strength and death is ruling with power and hell is following with him. In these dark days, in this spiritual night that we have entered into in which no man can work, the Bible says, death and hell are the the prevailing character of the time if we had to um, choose some things to represent these days of judgment it would be death and hell well in order for us to better understand the mysterious rider on the green horse whose name is death let's go back to the beginning in Genesis chapter 2, and learn a little bit more about death. And that's that's how we'll get a very good um, understanding of the one who is said to have his name as death. In Genesis chapter 2, God said in uh, verse 16, And Jehovah God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden, Thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. And we see right from the beginning that God establishes law. The law of God was given. It it was not um, a big law book. And by the way, the Bible is a law book. It's full of the commandments of God. You you really can't separate the laws of the Bible from the Bible. The entire word of God, the Bible, is really a law book. And and yet God didn't give Adam and then Eve um, the Bible all at once. He didn't give them... Um, even Ten Commandments, he just gave them one very simple and, and direct law, very plain for them to understand. There is a tree in the garden, and thou shalt not eat of it. In the day you eat of that tree, you will die. Now, up until this point, death was foreign to this beautiful and wonderful and good creation. Nothing died. Man did not die. The other animals did not die. No, nothing died that God had created. Death was unknown. But here it is stipulated as the consequence, as the punishment for disobedience. And, of course, we know it wasn't long soon after Adam and Eve disobeyed God. And as a result, mankind died in his soul existence. Adam and Eve died in their souls and and every child born from them. And we've all uh, come from the loins of Adam and Eve. Everyone, likewise, has been born dead in sin, dead in trespasses and sins as a result of this transgressing of breaking the law of God. God commanded, thou shalt not eat of the tree, and man ate of the tree. Now we read in the New Testament, in Romans chapter 5, let's, uh, let's go over to Romans 5. And in verse 12, it says, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. 
For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. In these verses, as well as many other places, God is describing how death came into the world. By one man's sin, well, let me read again verse 12, Wherefore is by one man's sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men. Death comes as a result of sin. And death reigned from Adam to Moses. Why does God say that? Well, when Moses uh, was born and, and when God had communication with him, he gave him further commandments, further laws of God. He gave Moses the first five books of the Bible, and Moses began to write down the written word of God, to record the laws of God. And and, and so uh, many more laws are given, and that creates opportunity for uh, much more sin. And yet from the point of Adam until the point of Moses, when the law of God was expanded and recorded in written form, still death reigned during that time because men were still sinners. And uh, let's also go to Romans chapter 7, and I'm going to read a passage beginning in verse 5. And our focus is on learning about death, the biblical definition, the biblical uh, understanding of death, and, and why it is that God is referring to death as the rider on the pale horse in our verse in Revelation 6. And so we want to get some background information on death. In Romans 7, verse 5, For when we were in the flesh, the motions of sins, which were by the law, did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. But now we are delivered from the law, that being dead, wherein we were held, that we should serve in newness of spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law, for I had not known lust, except the law had said, Thou shalt not covet. But sin, taking occasion, by the commandment, wrought in me all manner of concupiscence. For without the law, sin was dead. For I was alive without the law once. But when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. And the commandment, which was ordained to life, I found to be unto death. For sin, taking occasion by the commandment, deceived me, and by it slew me. Wherefore the law is holy, And the commandment holy and just and good was then that which is good made death unto me? God forbid. But sin, that it might appear sin, working death in me by that which is good, that sin by the commandment might become exceeding sinful. Now here we we do gain some insight into the workings of the law of God. First of all, there is nothing wrong with the law of God. There, there is no um, injustice. There is, there is nothing evil in the law that uh, brought about sin and death. It is sin taking occasion by the commandment. But God makes a point of stressing that the commandment is holy and just and good. His word is perfect and pure and right. And uh, there, there is no um, blemish. There is nothing wrong with the Bible. There is nothing wrong with the word of God. However, sin takes co- occasion by the commandment and by it slays man. 
and therefore death enters in, as it it says in um, verse 13, was then that which is good made death unto me? God forbid, but sin, that it might appear sin, working death in me by, by that which is good. And what is that which is good but the commandment? That sin by the commandment might become exceeding sinful. In, in other words, God is joining together his commandment with death. Death comes as a result of the breaking of the commandment of God. It came historically as a result of sin taking occasion by the commandment. And and, and so we cannot separate sin, which is a transgression of the law of God, and the Bible tells us the wages of sin is death and the commandment of God. Where the commandment is, there will be, uh, as a result now since the fall, a failure on man's part to uphold and to maintain with a perfect standard that commandment. And so he will fall and, and break the commandment. He will transgress the law of God. And as a result, the uh, pronouncement, the condemnation is made that thou shalt die. The wages of sin is death. We find in 2 Corinthians, in chapter 3, it says in verse 6, who also has made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. But if the ministration of death, written and engraven in stones, was glorious, so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses for the glory of his countenance, which glory was to be done away, hell shall not the ministration of the Spirit be rather glorious. Now, uh, as far as what we're interested in right now, the statement that the letter, in verse 6, the letter killeth. The, The letter is referring to the written word of God. The word of God is the Bible. The Bible kills because the Bible is full of commandments. The Bible is a law book. And when the Bible goes forth, when the law of God is declared or proclaimed or taught in any way, it strikes the listener dead with death because it convinces and convicts the sinner of their sin and it finds that they are guilty and, and the punishment that the Bible immediately pronounces is death. The wages of sin is death. The Bible is a book that brings death. And, and it's one of the reasons that mankind so fears it. That mankind wants to flee from it. That when the light of the word of God penetrates into the darkness of the world... And it shows man his sin. He wants to run from the light because that light will reveal that he is a sinner. And if he's a sinner, then uh, he is guilty of death. He is deserving of the wrath of God to be destroyed forevermore. And, And so he flees. He tries to get away in whatever way he can. And some develop other religions to escape. Some pervert the right religion, the the Christian religion, in order to escape. Some deny there is a God in order to escape. And and some just uh, try to avoid it, uh, even physically, if possible, at all costs, in order to get away from the law's decree, from the condemnation, the wrath, that the law pronounces upon them that you have broken the law. You have broken the everlasting covenant. This is what God says in Isaiah chapter 24 in the chapter describing judgment day. 
uh, in, in verse 5, The earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof, because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinance, broken the everlasting covenant. Therefore hath the curse devoured the earth, and they that dwell therein are desolate. That Hebrew word translated as desolate ought actually to be translated as guilty. They are guilty. And, and that is the law's decree, the law's uh, statement to all men. Unless they have a Savior, unless someone has taken their sins upon himself, and made payment on their behalf, and satisfied the law's perfect demands for justice. And only then can the law of God, the Bible, uh, pass by an individual and, and no longer condemn that person. There is therefore no more condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus, the Bible tells us. And that individual is free from the penalty of the law, free from the condemnation and wrath of God, and therefore free to live forevermore. Well, uh, let's also look at 2 Corinthians chapter 2, and we'll see how this uh, word of God, the commandment of God that identifies with death, relates to the true believer. In 2 Corinthians 2, it says in verse 15, For we are unto God a sweet savor of Christ, in them that are saved, and in them that perish. To the one we are the savor of death unto death, and to the other the savor of life unto life. And who is sufficient for these things? Well, we can see why this is. We are the sweet savor of Christ in them that are saved, and in them that perish. Because we closely relate to and identify with the word of Christ, the Bible. And as we share this word, well, if God um, had chosen a, a certain individual to salvation and we brought the word of God to them, it was as though they were receiving life because it was through that word that God saved them. But on the other hand, if they were not one of God's chosen people, if their name was not found in the Lamb's book of life, uh, recorded before the foundation of the world, if they were not predestinated to salvation, then we became a savor of death unto death because they are subject to perish. They are, uh, they are uh, not elect of God. But what happens... What happens at the time of the end, in the day of judgment, when God's people continue to identify completely and relate to the word of Christ, the Bible, and yet God has finished his salvation program. He has saved the last of his elect to be saved, has already been saved. And now what when that word goes forth as uh, God's people seek to obey God and and send the word to his sheep. Well, when others hear it, there is no savor of life unto life possible anymore. There is only death unto death. The believers now completely identify with the law of God, the Bible, which only brings death in this day of judgment.